Hello everyone! Welcome to a new day of more fun and learning. I am Teacher Angel, your science teacher, and I am very excited to bring you today's lesson about saturated and unsaturated solutions. Keep watching because at the end of this lesson, you are expected to investigate properties of saturated and unsaturated solutions. So brace yourselves as we explore the wonderful world of science. In the previous lessons, you learned about mixtures and their characteristics. You have done activities where you mixed a solid and a liquid or combined two different liquids. In the process of mixing, you have observed that these mixtures either form homogeneous or heterogeneous mixtures. You have seen that when all parts of the mixture have the same uniform appearance and properties, it is homogeneous. You also learned that when different parts of the mixture can be identified, it is heterogeneous. An example of a heterogeneous mixture is ice cubes placed in a glass of soft drink. There are different phases that can be identified in this example. The solid phase, which is the ice cubes, and the liquid phase, which is the soft drink. When all the ice cubes are melted, only one phase is seen, and that is liquid. It now becomes homogeneous. An example of a homogeneous mixture is a solution. But wait, what is a solution? Well, let's go find out together. Flavored juice is one of our go-to drinks during hot sunny days. We simply mix the powder, the sugar, and the cold water together to quench our thirst. By doing so, we have already made a solution. Solution is a mixture that has a uniform composition. In order to produce this, two substances are being used, the solute and the solvent. Solute is a component of a solution that is being dissolved, normally present in a smaller amount. On the other hand, solvent is a component of a solution that dissolves the solute and it is normally greater in amount. To understand more about this, why don't we try this simple experiment? We need a beaker of water, stirrer, sugar and spoon, and heating apparatus. We're going to mix a spoon of sugar into the water and stir it until the sugar dissolves completely. In this case, the water in the glass is the solvent. The sugar which is the substance being dissolved is the solute and the result is called a sugar solution. Did you know that water is called the universal solvent? Water is considered to be the universal solvent due to the fact that there are many substances that can be dissolved from it just like on the example mentioned above. Now, between solute and solvent, we will focus on the solute. The ability of the solute to be dissolved in a solvent is what we call solubility. In our example, the reason why sugar will dissolve in water because this substance possess a property called solubility. But as you increase the amount of solute in a given solution, there is a tendency that not all solution will be dissolved completely. The amount of dissolved solute produces three types of solution, saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated. Let's find out what these three types of solution is all about based on the amount of dissolved solute in a solvent. Put one spoon of sugar into the water and stir it until the sugar dissolves completely. Now we are able to make a sugar solution. Unsaturated solution is a type of solution containing less amount of solute in a given amount of solvent, leaving no traces of it. The question is, can we dissolve any amount of sugar in water? Wonder what will happen if you keep adding more sugar to the solution. This time, keep adding a spoon of sugar in the water and stir it. Notice that after a few spoons, 
The sugar starts settling at the bottom of the beaker despite all the stirring that we do. There comes a stage at which no more sugar can be dissolved in the solution. This solution is now saturated and this point is called the saturation point of the solution. Saturated solution is a type of solution that contains the maximum amount of solute dissolved by a given amount of solvent. If you add more solute to the solvent, it will no longer dissolve because the solution has reached its saturation point. Saturation point, on the other hand, is the point beyond which the substance will no longer dissolve in the solution. The presence of an excess solid which can no longer dissolve is evidence that the solution is saturated, thus becoming supersaturated. Now, is there a way by which we can dissolve the excess sugar which is settled at the bottom of the beaker? Let's hit the solution and see what happens. Notice that the excess sugar settled at the bottom of the beaker starts dissolving. Therefore, we can say that heating a saturated solution makes it unsaturated and hence, larger amount of a substance can be dissolved in a saturated solution by heating. Are solutions formed only by mixing a solid with a liquid? The answer is no, not really. Look at this shiny trumpet. It is made of brass. Do you know that brass is a solution of two metals? Yes. Copper and zinc are metals in solid form which are melted together, mixed uniformly, and then solidified to form a solution called brass. Perhaps you also wonder if we can mix gas in a liquid to form a solution. Hmm, that's a really smart query. I know very well that you are all very fond of drinking cold soda drinks. Well, guess what? I do too. And these drinks that we all love are nothing else but solutions. Just a friendly reminder, water is still the best drink we need for hydration. Surprised, aren't you? Well, soda drinks contain solutions made from a combination of gas and water. Let me explain in detail. Carbon dioxide and water go through a process called carbonation to form aerated drinks such as colas and sodas. Have you noticed that when we open a bottle of cola, bubbles dry to the top of the drink? The bubbles you see are the result of released carbon dioxide gas from the solution of water and carbon dioxide. Why don't we recap all that we have learned today, shall we? Solution is a homogeneous mixture that has a uniform composition. There are two components of a solution, the solute and the solvent. A saturated solution can thus be defined as a solution in which no more solute can be dissolved. Unsaturated solution is a type of solution containing less amount of solute in a given amount of solvent, leaving no traces of it. Saturation point is the point beyond which the substance will no longer dissolve in the solution. A saturated solution can be made unsaturated by heating it. This time, why don't you try this simple activity at home using some of the materials found in your household? I hope you learned and enjoyed the lesson. Stay safe and always be cautious. 
This is Teacher Angel once again and I'll see you all next time.